What's going on guys, it's Dell here from Demzac, and in this video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different to usual. As those in the UK probably already know, the temperature here has just absolutely plummeted. And it seems to do this every year, we have our happy little week of summer, then it's just grey for a while, and then the temperature out of nowhere, before it even gets winter, just goes into the negatives. And as a result of that, my flat has been struggling to stay warm. And I think it's mainly down to the fact that I don't have a conventional water heater or boiler. So in a conventional house in the UK, what tends to happen is there's a boiler which either heats up oil or water, which gets pumped around to all these radiators around the houses and keeps everyone warm. Whereas what's more common in like a flat in the UK or an apartment is everything's electric. So you might have electric heaters on the wall that are all plugged into the mains of electricity. And as a result of that, there's no real thermostat. There's no real like temperature control. And you may be starting to ask yourself, Dale, why are you talking about temperatures and the weather on a hacking channel? And it's not just because my small talk's terrible. My, my goal with this video is I want to make a temperature sensor using a ESP32 and a little temperature sensor module, which I can then integrate with Home Assistant to control all of my smart devices and more importantly, control my heaters, which I have connected with smart plugs. So how exactly is this going to work? So let's assume we've already got a version of Home Assistant running, and I'm going to put this in what is supposed to be a cloud, but it's not quite come out like one. Um, so that's Home Assistant. Within Home Assistant, we have the ability to add on uh, something called ESP Home. P Home. And let's put that in another... Oh wow, that, that cloud's even better. So from ESP Home, what we can do is get a little ESP32 module and ESP32 and a little temperature sensor so this will be TS and if we wire this up into our ESP32 this can then communicate with ESP Home which can then register it as a device within Home Assistant. So if we do a little bit of a top down of my ESP32 if we just do ESP32 down the right hand side of the device, so we've got our USB port here, down the right hand side of the device we've got a number of pins. Um, and for the temperature sensor I've selected, what we need is a, a positive, a 5 volt positive, a ground and a data line. And thankfully all down this side here, we've got a 5 volt here, 5 volt, Some a few pins along we've got a ground. Then a few more down here we've got GPIO25. GPIO25. And that's what we're going to be using to connect the data. So now that we have a rough idea on exactly how to wire this thing up, let's go ahead and set up ESP Home in Home Assistant and get this device registered before we start soldering, just in case we destroy it. Once you've got Home Assistant installed, what you're going to want to do is go to Supervisor and then go to the add-on store. I already have it installed here, but let's just do it again anyway. You want to go to the add-on store and you want to search for ESP Home. I already have it installed, but you want to install that. I have an update available, but we'll do that later. And once that's installed, we can open the web UI. And you can see here, I've already got one of my sensors here. But what we can do is click add. I'm going to create a new, lo uh, new node name. And this, as you say, as it says here, has to be lowercase, numbers, or underscores. So I'm going to go for living room temperature sensor. And then for the device types, we're going to go for ESP32 generic with the Rover module. Next, and here we're going to enter our Wi-Fi SSID and password. So I'll just grab mine. So I've got my password plugged in there. I'm going to go next, and then we're going to go submit. And that's going to create this node here. So now we've created that, we want to click edit. And this is just in my case, because my SSID is hidden. So we're going to want to add something else. Um, but it's also good to note here, if it's unable to connect to the main SSID, which is here, it'll automatically create an access point with the SSID of the name of the sensor and its own password and you can get this at any time so don't worry about it noting this down you can just come back to this page and hit edit but this is good say if you wanted to change the access point uh, you can plug this in and flash it remotely 
But as I mentioned, because I have a hidden SSID, I want to enable Quick Connect. And they actually call Quick Connect Fast Connect. So I'm going to do Fast Connect True. And what this means is it's not going to bother looking or scanning for the access point. It's just going to take this SSID and the password and try and connect to it straight away. If you don't have this on and you have a hidden SSID, it'll just fail to connect all the time because it'll be constantly trying to scan and it's not going to be able to see it. So if we hit save, and then we can go to the three dots here and do compile. And this is going to build our firmware for us. So we just need to wait. Usually this will take longer, but I've already tested it. So it took a few seconds, but it can take a couple of minutes. And then we can download the binary and we'll save that. And this is what we need to flash onto our ESP32. So we're going to need two files. Obviously we need the firmware file that we've just generated. And we'll also need ESP home flasher. Um, so what we're going to start off by doing is connecting our kind of raw ESP32 to the PC. And you just need a regular micro USB cable that supports data. I only mention that because I've been through about 50 of these cables that I have and a lot of them just seem to do power. Um, but we want data as well. So I'll connect that to my computer. And we just need to open ESP Home Flasher. Then we're going to have to look for the serial port, and in this case it's COM3. And then we're going to need our living room temperature sensor, dot bin. And then we're going to flash ESP. And it might take a few attempts, but once it gets to here it's pretty much surefire. Um, if it, like I say, if it is struggling to connect, just either press and hold or tap the boot button on your ESP32 module, and then it should start writing the firmware. And it's been able to connect. And you might be able to see in the background here, our living room temperature sensor, living room temperature sensor has gone green, so it's been able to connect. Um, obviously, we're not actually sending any data yet. We don't have the temperature sensor connected to this, but let's get to soldering now and uh, connect that temperature sensor. Now we've finished soldering this device of ours, we need to change the configuration within ESP Home to actually tell the device what it is and where it's connected. So I'm just going to start off by plugging it back in and hoping that I haven't fried anything. So I've just plugged it in, hopefully it goes green and it's gone green, which mean, should mean I haven't fried anything. And we'll just wait for this to boot up and we'll be able to see that we've managed to connect, we've got our MAC address and all that kind of fun stuff. So right now you might be thinking that we need to go ahead and like reflash this, like get a new binary. But what's awesome about ESP Home is once we've set it up once, so it's connected to our server, 
we can push the updates over the air. So if we edit this, there's something I'm just going to copy and paste here and I'll provide that within the description. So we create a new sexual section within the YAML called uh, Sensor. We'd say the platform, which is the DHT, which is the module that we've got, is DHT11. It's connected to pin 5. And we're going to change this to living room temperature. And this one we're going to change to living room, not live room, living room humidity. So if we save this, we can then upload it. And this is going to compile it and it should flash it over the air to our ESP device. Now it's going to boot back up. It's going to give us that debug information again. And then we need to wait one minute for the first check-in of the temperature sensor. See here, we've got 23.8 and 51%. So now that our temperature sensor is working, we can now stop this, which just closes it. And we should get a notification now. And it'll say that there's new devices discovered. So if we check it out, we can configure our new living room temperature sensor. And it'll just simply ask, do you want to add the ESP Home no Node living room temperature sensor to Home Assistant? Hit submit, give it an area. So we'll say living room and then hit finish. And we can then just simply access this like any other device. And for now, I've just added it to my home page. And I can close this now. I've added it to my home page as living room temperature and this is the device that we've created huge thank you for watching this video guys i hope you enjoyed it i know it's a little bit different from what i usually do but if you are interested in seeing more smart home content remember to leave a comment and a like down below it really helps out if you're interested in any kind of hacking video related videos there's loads of other ones on my channel that you can go and have a look at but if you are interested in as i say more smart home content and you're not already subscribed go ahead and do that I'll try and get a blog post up sometime this week on uh, demsec.co.uk about how to actually do all of this and all the individual steps. I know this has kind of been a bit um, a bit of a fast overview of how to go ahead and make one of these, but there are a few other things I want to make, such as like DIY motion sensors for controlling lights and stuff. So if you're interested in that, once again, leave a like, and I'll see you next time.